Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zono's. Recap for this weekend, happy post-Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving feast and eats were decent for me. I don't know about everybody else, but I did enjoy my food, my turkey, my chitlins, my greens, and my gravy. Now, the shakeup happened in college football. The playoff bag has now moved around as far as the teams that will be considered to be playoff worthy. If you look at the losses that happened this weekend, it makes you wonder, when will we get up to eight teams? Miami lost to Pitt on Friday. Now, they obviously had this coming because the close calls finally caught up to the Canes. They're 10-1. Remember, they're 10-1 because they didn't play a game due to Hurricane Harvey, I want to say, or one of the other Hurricanes, maybe um, Irma. But Miami, that loss to Pitt could do them in if they can, if in fact they can't prove to be able to uh, beat Clemson. So... That's interesting to see that development. What will the Canes be able to do? Will they still be able to get in? They can't without that win against Clemson in the ACC championship. And also, Alabama dropped the Iron Bowl versus Auburn. Auburn dominated this game. Jared Stidham played outstanding. And Bama being 11-1, this being their only loss, it makes you wonder, are they done? This is another reason why you would say, maybe we need to think about moving to an 18 format for the, for the college football playoff. Now, Alabama fans, go ahead and return your tickets to uh, the the front office or whoever, or call Ticketmaster, because I'm sure a lot of Alabama fans pre-bought these tickets, uh, ex fully expecting to end up in Atlanta, but that won't happen. It'll be the SEC Championship in the Mercedes-Benz Dome, rematch Georgia and Auburn, and I guarantee the game will be lit. Georgia, they will win, in my opinion, because this is a grudge match, and with no carry on Johnson because he got hurt in that Alabama Auburn game, even though he had the jump pass and was phenomenal, he still won't be available to play against Georgia. Most likely won't be available. And if he does play, he surely won't be 100%. So I fully expect Georgia to come out pumped up and maybe even beat Auburn by double digits because Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle didn't play good in the first game. I expect them to come and ball this time. So, uh, Make sure you tune into the SEC Championship. I'll be watching that. Kirby Smart should have these guys ready to play. Now, as far as the Big 12 Championship, TCU versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield, they've got a spot. They're settled in the saddle. Can they beat TCU for a second time? I think if they do, that will put them for sure in the college football playoff. But if TCU wins, Oklahoma's out. ACC Championship, Miami versus Clemson. I'm picking Clemson in that game because the Power Rangers, what's it, uh, um, uh, why, uh, Christian Wilkins and all those guys, those though that defensive line for Clemson, they're they're unstoppable. They've got a bunch of first rounders on that offensive line. Excuse me, on that D line. So I fully expect Clemson to get something done. The Big Ten Championship, Ohio State versus versus Wisconsin. Now Ohio State with the two losses, you wonder and you think to yourself, if they beat an undefeated Wisconsin team, can Ohio State end up in the college football playoff? Hmm. I'm going to say no because two losses from that conference and you beat a, a, a team, Wisconsin, who didn't have a strong schedule to begin with, and you got beat by Oklahoma, I don't think you jump anybody. You're not going to jump the ACC. You're not going to jump the SEC. Is there still a way that Alabama gets in? I'd say they're done. My playoff selections would be, I'm going to go ahead and say that you'll see Clemson, you'll see Oklahoma, You'll see Georgia, because Georgia will beat Auburn. And honestly, you might see Alabama. So I don't think that Alabama will get in, but I feel like if Wisconsin loses, that opens the door for Alabama to slide right back in there. I don't see UCF or Memphis or anybody from those um, non-Power 5 conferences to get in, but be on the lookout for that. Now, what we should also pay attention to is the hot seats that are all over the country right now. Which jobs were made vacant? Which jobs were filled? Now, UCLA fired Jim Moore last week, but they hired Chip Kelly. That's an upgrade. And it seems like after Chip Kelly got hired, everybody scrambled and said, oh, my gosh, we got to get a coach. Texas A&M dumped Kevin Sullivan. Excuse me, Kevin Sumlin. Arkansas fired Brett Billima, who had been there for five or six seasons. Nebraska fired Mike Riley, who dipped on Oregon State to come over to Nebraska. And you look at Nebraska's situation, they've talked about potentially talking to, to – uh, Scott Frost, who's the head co head coach at UCF currently, and he has them at an undefeated record, so he could be the next person to fill that job. Florida hired Dan Mullen. He can't get those Florida kids to play at Mississippi State, so go to Florida. He can recruit there. Tennessee almost hired Greg Schiano, and there was a lot of backlash about how the Volunteers faithful were, 
and what they did as far as protest on campus after they announced that they might hire Greg Schiano. They said things about his involvement or his so-called involvement because his name was mentioned in the Sandusky case by Mike McQuarrie, who was an assistant coach, which I think uh, was a little bit egregious. If you don't want a coach, just say you don't want him. I don't think Greg Schiano was the guy for this. John Curry, the AD for Tennessee, needs to learn to pump the brakes. They may owe Greg Schiano some money. That could or may or may not be legally binding, just depending on the fact that the chancellor did not sign it. However, John Curry and Greg Schiano both signed the memorandum of understanding. Now, Tennessee, you got to go talk to somebody who's got some championship pedigree. Why not call T. Martin? I'm, John Gruden may not be the guy, but why not call T. Martin? Why not talk to someone like, I don't know, uh, uh, Jimbo Fisher? Put your nets out there. Talk to people who will come to Tennessee who have championship. I'm not going to give Greg Schiano credit for a Rutgers team that wasn't even that good after Ray Rice and all those guys left. I mean, yeah, he had the McCourty Twins, but how many games did he really win? He was barely over 500 at Rutgers. So miss me with all the he's a great coach talk. Sick of it. Now, NFL-wise, big games this weekend for Turkey Day. Cowboys, they've lost three straight games, lost to the Chargers this weekend. Zeke, do you see why they need you? Get well soon, Zeke, from that suspension and come back because your team is definitely struggling. The Vikings beat the Lions in Detroit. Case Keenum, 21 for 30, 282 yards, two TDs. Case is closed there. Teddy Bridgewater will probably be looking for a new home soon. The Rams snapped the Saints' eight-game win streak. They're waiting for... See, see me, I'm waiting for a flop for the Rams, and that hasn't come. I thought they were going to flop after this Vikings blowout last week, 24-7, but they come back and beat the eight-game winning streak Saints, so maybe the Rams are for real. I got to stop talking so bad about them. Raiders beat the Broncos. However, that was overshadowed by Tlaib and Crabtree round two. They got busy on the field three minutes into the game. Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree swinging, punching each other around. Both got two-game suspension, so this is basically three games because they were unavailable to play. I don't have a problem with it because they fight in hockey, and they also fight in baseball. But yeah, I understand that it's allowed in certain sports, but let's be honest. This is testosterone. It's football. Things happen, but let's not make it a habit, guys. Now, NCAA hoops, holiday tournaments were out and about, and I was disappointed by a few teams but one in particular, Arizona, they were number two. They showed me they're way too young. Alonzo Trier, he's great. DeAndre Ayton, the seven-footer, the freshman, he's great. But three straight losses to NC State, SMU, Purdue lets me know that you were a pretender. You never should have been ranked number two. So go ahead and jump, fall out of the rankings. Come back when you're ready to ball. Alabama's Colin Sexton dropped 43 points against Minnesota after his entire bench got thrown out of the game and they only had three players after one of their four, four players on the court hurt his ankle. So for 10 minutes, they played with three players and still lost 89-84. And at one point, it was 83-80. Colin Sexton, the young boy, will definitely be a lottery pick if he chooses to come out based off that performance, if he can stay consistent for the duration of the season. Shout out to you, Colin Sexton. Duke and Florida are Final Four worthy. We saw that in the PK-80 with the two overtime wins. And then the epic game that we saw on Sunday night, Marvin Bagley, 30 points, 15 rebounds. Marvin Bagley could be a Player of the Year candidate, and it's crazy because this man, reclassified, should still be in high school, should be playing with R.J. Barrett. But he's not, so he'll be playing in the NBA next year making millions of dollars. Now, Friday's game was pure theater. And what the Friday game I'm speaking about the NBA OKC versus Golden State, Russ versus KD. We finally saw it come to a head. Russ let KD know that we never needed you. Hey, KD, I got two new friends. Meet Paul uh, and meet Melo, and we're going to ball. And what did they do? OKC finally looked, like, finally looked like a championship team who could get the job done and beat the elite. KD, yes, he came back from an injury, but Russell Westbrook knew every move and did everything he could to show KD that OKC was, has always been his town, and it always will be his team. So, mental warfare? Eh, somewhat. I look forward to seeing the, the matchup in February when OKC goes to Golden State, because I got to see how the, this OKC team will play on the road at Golden State, even though they have these new additions and they were able to get the dominating win. Uh... That was definitely a treat to watch. Stop trying to keep the feud down. We want to see that, KD and Russ. Do your thug thizzle. Next show, we will definitely wrap. Make sure you check out Zono Sports. And I've always got the juice to talk about. 
So keep watching Zono Sports, where you know Zono's.